there was a lot of fucking great fights this last weekend. Um, for for starters, there was a, a tremendous card on the zone that featured three really high level championship women's fights. The first being uh, Rachel Ball winning a unanimous decision over Jorgelina Guanini. And this was a very, very interesting style matchup because you had one girl was very tall, very long, um, very fast, fast twitch, fast hands. And then in in Rachel Ball and then in Guanini, what you had was a kind of stockier fighter with really slick defensive moves that kind of like to stay on the outside, you know, and and capitalize on a mistake and, and get a burst off, you know. And this was at... I believe Super Bantam, uh, so they would have been 122 pounds, but the size difference was pretty substantial. Ball was just like maybe six inches taller, it seemed like. But early in the fight, at least, Guanini was able to stay on the back foot and be very, very elusive. Very tricky to hit clean in the face. So, you know, she was moving her head. She was, you know, kind of making Ball pay a lot and a lot of times ball would be throwing these straight long punches but doing it from a little too close and guanini would be having these big looping punches around her guard and she'd be catching her um and mostly she would do it while ball was punching so ball would get off a combination and she would sort of slip 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 pop do something wide but kind of it wouldn't be fast but it would be timed well like kind of how maidana you know, would throw a big looping shot, but the timing on it would be so that it landed in a way that you didn't necessarily expect. Um, and then ultimately over time, it seemed like Ball's activity just stayed persistent. Um, and the combination of the pressure and the height and the hand speed started to get to Guanini maybe in like the fourth or fifth round. And she started landing good hard combinations and getting her on the ropes and and finding little spots to really pin her down and get her shots off. And I think clearly took over the second half of the fight and wound up winning a unanimous decision. I don't know that much about that weight neighborhood in women's boxing, but um, Rachel Ball is very, very talented. She's got a lot of, lot of hand speed. And she stays busy, man. And she's not she's not stupid defensively either. She could tighten it up a little bit, but she's not stupid defensively. She's good. Um, the the length at that weight particularly is going to be a lot for most of these girls to deal with. I think she'll probably move up at some point, maybe. It looks like she's got the frame to do it. Why not? There's bigger fights probably for her at featherweight with people. You know, she, there's like Amanda Serrano and Heather Hardy. So, um, yeah, good win for Rachel Ball. The co-main event was Terry Harper getting a ninth-round TKO over Katarina Thanders. Um, this had a similar feel early in the fight, too, where Thanders was kind of like landing some weird looping shots as Harper was throwing straight punches. And what we found out later was that Harper broke one of her, I believe her, left hand in the fourth round. And started boxing on the back foot right off the jab you know the right hook to the body being very smart being very calculated about picking her shots and and doing everything from the outside and her footwork is amazing she just glides around the ring very very difficult to to get her to just sit down in one spot and kind of stay there and exchange so when she's on that bicycle mentality she's circling you you're just eating jabs and eating jabs and eating jabs and that's what Thanders was doing, man. She was just eating that jab over and over and over again for round after round. You know, sometimes she would mix in that right hook to the body, circle out. You know, there was never really a time where she's standing in one place. Um, so even if she's not getting, like, all the power on every shot, she's staying so busy and she's constantly tagging Thanders, making her keep her hands in her pocket. She was, like, very plodding, trying to come forward and move her head and counter, but she was just... She was too slow and she wasn't, she wasn't prepared for, she didn't have the tools to deal with that level of movement. She couldn't cut the ring off. She wasn't fast enough. Just all the things she was outmatched. And then, um, in the ninth round, Harper lands a really, really hard, I believe it was a, a, it might even been a left hand to the body. That's what was surprising was that she landed something with the hurt hand, but she landed a body shot that you could see took the wind right out of Thanders immediately she started to back off 
and Harper just followed it up, and eventually the ref stepped in. Um, this was a very, very impressive win for Harper. Every time I've seen her, it seems like she adds something new. Even the Jonas fight where she was obviously just in with somebody who really knew what they were doing. Um, it felt like she's only going to learn and improve from that kind of a fight where you're, you're in with somebody that's matching your IQ. And um, I think that, you know, hopefully she can fight Michaela Mayer next. That would be ideal. I think that's a great fight at 130. Mayer just fought as well. So let's see if Bob Arum and Eddie Hearn can, can get that fight together as soon as possible um, and have, you know, maybe an undisputed champion at 130 pounds, you know, sometime in 2021, um, which would be cool as fuck. And then the main event was Katie Taylor fighting uh, Miriam Gutierrez. This was a little bit of a mismatch um, because Katie Taylor is probably the best pound for pound women's fighter in the world and really just put a beating on Gutierrez. Um, you know, the, the first bell, first 20 seconds of the fight, she was just on her, throwing hard combinations, backing her up. Dropped her in the fourth round, and it was like every round there would be like a rinse and repeat. Every once in a while, she would kind of get up on her toes and box for a bit and, and try to make Gutierrez come to her a little bit. But it was really, um, it was almost just impressive that Gutierrez could hang on for that long. Um, she never really even seemed flustered, but she took an absolute beating, and she just stood there. And she was game, and she threw back the whole fight. There wasn't ever a time where she stopped throwing punches. She just, it's hard to land on Katie, and particularly with the hand speed. The, the thing about Katie Taylor that I find the most impressive is the in and out with the feet. Like, and she, she has this, she's almost perfect, like, calculator sense of distance and where to throw what, and she'll pop back out and then pop back in. Um, and it's, she's really fast. Like the whole, the whole sequence of her throwing a six punch combination, getting out back in six punch. Like it's just, it, the pace of it is overwhelming. She's just, it, she's a little like uh Loma where she's got like that other gear where she can go to, where she kind of figures you out. And then it's just like, it's so relentless. Um, and like I said, you really got to give it to Gutierrez just for fucking hanging around. I mean, this was a brutal fight. I thought multiple times that, Katie was going to stop her. I think the commentators at one point were saying like, oh, if, if Katie doesn't stop her, it's like it's like a disappointment. But I honestly think that's a testament to the opponent. The, just that this the shots this girl was taking and not going down were crazy. She had a lot of heart, man. A lot of heart. Um, so for Katie, I mean... What's next for Katie? I think ultimately what makes sense is her and Terry Harper. You know, especially with women's boxing where sometimes there isn't as much competition. There isn't as big of a pool. You know, you have to be a little more flexible about the weight. Um, I think putting them on the same card had to be strategic on some level to just check the temperature. Like, put them next to each other, see who, you know, see how it goes. See if they both win. See if people like seeing them on the same night. You know, maybe see if there's a mutual audience or whatever. So, I think that's. It seems like it's pretty obvious to me that that's in their in both of their future at some point. I don't know exactly when, but hopefully Taylor Harper. Um, hopefully, if Harper decides that she wants to fight Michaela Mayer next, that Katie can fight the winner of that. Um, there's Natasha Jonas, who was Harper's opponent prior to this fight. They got a draw. I think her boxing IQ is really high, and she'd be a very, very credible opponent for Katie. You know, you got Amanda Serrano. I know they've been trying to make that fight for a little bit. I'm not sure what's holding that up. You got fucking the winner of McCaskill and Cecilia Brackus, uh, the rematch. So there's a lot of options out there for Katie, and... At the end of the day, they're all going to want to, or at least the head is out, should be, they're all going to want to fight her because she's, she's, um, she's the star now of women's boxing, I would say. That's my opinion. Obviously, there's other great fighters as well, but I think she's kind of the top dog right now. 
So that was the zone card. I thought it was really well done. Um, it was great for women's boxing. It was great for boxing as a whole. Just having, you know, two fighters of that level on the same card. So I, I really enjoyed it.